you are outside in the hall, why don't you make your way in? Because the way we're starting this song, we need your help. So why don't you stand with us? And uh, Nat and I are going to show you how this chorus goes. You guys ready to praise the Lord this morning? Amen? Hope you're awake because this first one, we need your energy. We've done it a few times. We're ready to go. So th this, is, uh, this is the chorus. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say.
All right. Thanks for coming this morning. Yes. You guys go ahead now. Go. We're going to continue in worship here. Let's um, give it up for the DCC band. They yeah. make it look so easy. So easy. All right, we're going to continue in worship this morning. Stop. 
So oh. 
Lord, thank you so much that uh, you are in this place with us, Lord, and thank you that you have sent your spirit, and he lives in us, Lord, and he uh, helps us to worship you. Lord, thank you that we were able to praise your name here this morning. I pray that your name would be lifted up, that you would take all the glory, all the attention today. Lord, we are here for you, and we offer all these things up to you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Hey, while you guys are standing, go ahead, look around, find somebody you don't know, and say, hey, shake their hand. Good morning, DCC. Good morning. Everybody will grab their seats. We'll go ahead and get started. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing on this fine Sunday? Okay. I know it's hot outside, but how's everybody doing? Good? Good? Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, welcome to DCC. My name is Michael Kane. I am the youth director slash pastor here at DCC, and I'm so glad to welcome you. First of all, can we just give a hand to the band? What a blessed morning this was for this morning. Thank you, guys. You really, ah, you blessed my heart today, so thank you for that. Uh, we are blessed to have them. So I uh, just wanted to say thank you and also uh, welcome. If you are new with us, uh, we invite you to go ahead and s either scan the barcode that will be behind me or reach in front of your seat back there and uh, grab a Connect card there so we, and fill it out so we know who you are and we can bother, you know, the daylights out of you. Um, no, just kidding. We, we won't. We'll just uh, reach out, say hi, and uh, introduce ourselves because we want to know that you're here. Uh, so we have some exciting things going on this week. Does anybody know what this week is? The 4th of July, that's right, we have a 4th of July parade coming, and from what I've heard, we have about 43 people, 43 people, yeah, that's great, so that's awesome, uh, definitely thank you for signing up, if you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, well, just show up, we'll make a spot for you, and uh, you can come walk with us, we were looking for about 50 people, so we still have about seven more slots open if you're wanting to, and also, we are in need of probably like two or three people, maybe, of that group that would be willing to go to the village, Dunwoody Village, before the parade and set up our tent, set up the table, uh, we have a banner, I believe, if I'm correct for that, and uh, just get things set up for us, because uh, when we get done, we'll be able to just launch off from there, so if you're interested, just let Pastor Tim know, or myself, and we'll get you uh, set up for that. Also, uh, Sunshine Ministry is meeting today right after service. Uh, if you are involved in that, you will be meeting in the Situation Room. If you don't know where that is, just go straight down the hallway until you hit the Fellowship Hall. Take a right and keep going. You'll smack right into it, I promise you. Right, and so the meeting is for those that did not have an opportunity to come last Sunday. And is there light snacks and stuff as like before? Okay. So light snacks and everything will be there for you as well. So uh, that will follow. And if you don't know what the Sunshine Ministry is, it is our ministry that we started through Larry here, one of our elders, uh, that you have the opportunity to serve some of those that are not able to make it to church. And so it's a great opportunity to meet with them, pray with them, and just show them that they're loved. So it's an, a great opportunity for that. And uh, yeah, that's all I have. So I'm going to invite our elder, Eric Svensson, up to pray over Pastor Tim today. One more thing. Sorry. I forgot to show the shirt. We got the shirts in. And after service, if you will, come out to the foyer, you will see uh, me and my son, Aaron, and we'll be handing these out. Here's this, the front side, Dunwoody, and then stars, stripe, and saved. So your shirts will be available. Thank you to Dante. Dante, give a big hand for Dante for designing this. And we also have some bracelets for you. Thanks. All right, let's pray. Lord God, we are so thankful to be in your house today, to be able to worship you, to glorify your name. We are so thankful that you have chosen us to be a part of your plan, part of your kingdom, and how you have chosen to use us to glorify yourself. We pray that you would just equip Tim today as he teaches us. 
more about what it means to be sent, that we would be sent out to represent you well. Help us hear from you today. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Eric. Well, good morning, everybody. Jeff goes out of town a couple of, a couple of weeks every year, and when he goes out of town, guess who comes up here and preaches for you guys? So here I am. Um, I've always wanted to open a sermon this way, the way that Jeff opens every Sunday. So my opening is, turn in your Bibles. We're going to be in John. We're going to be reading John chapter 20 this morning. So go ahead and turn to John chapter 20. But as you're turning, I want to shout out a couple of things here. Uh, first of all, it's great to have Natalie back with us this morning. Thank you for being here and the whole family here on the front row. That's, that's very uh, brave of you to be there. And um, most of you know that we're sending off to Estes family today. They are moving to Colorado, all of our, I know, exactly. We've, we prayed against that, but, um, you know, God said yes to them. So we want to send them off today. And so we're going to be having a special time after the message today, after we do communion, to be some more worship, and we're going to be sending them off. Um, and he's not going to like this, but a shout out to Yolandi and Jared, who has left the room because they are now engaged. <laughs> Hold your ring up. Let's see it. Congratulations. I see how he conveniently walked out of the room as I gave that. So, uh, yeah. Um, so this morning, as we are sending off the Estes, I thought it would be a really good time to talk about each Sunday at the end of the message, we say, Dunwoody, you are sent. We talk about what it means to make disciples. And today we're going to be sending a family away. And I wanted to kind of zoom in on that a little bit. Just to give you a heads up. Next week, I actually won't be up here teaching, so it's okay to come back next week. But we have a friend of mine, a guy named Blake Odgers. Uh, Blake is a young man who comes out of Westridge Church um, here in Atlanta, and he's planting a church called Kingdom City down in Chambly. So he's just in the phases of starting to build his team, and so he's available next week, so he'll be with us this next week. But today I want to talk about what it means, what do we mean each week when we say, you are sent. I want to go a little bit deeper into that. So I'll be reading from John chapter 20. I'll really be getting into primarily verses 19 through 23, but just to give you some context for what we'll be talking about, let's read this together. Now, I'll be reading in the New American Standard Version, so I apologize. This is what I use at home for my quiet times. John chapter 20. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark and saw the stone already taken away from the tomb. And so she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb. We do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and the other disciple and they were going to the tomb. And the two were running together and the other disciple ran ahead faster than Peter and came to the tomb first. And stooping and looking in, he saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Simon Peter therefore also came following him and entered the tomb, and he beheld the linen wrappings lying there. And the face cloth, which had been on his head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. So the other disciple who had come first to the tomb entered then also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. So the disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary was standing outside the tomb weeping. And so as she wept, she stooped and looked into the tomb and she beheld two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been lying. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and behold, Jesus was standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. 
Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my Father and your Father and my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came, announcing to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. Verse 19. When therefore it was evening on that first day, on that day, the first day of the week, and when the doors were shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them both his hands and his side. The disciples therefore rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus therefore said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, their sins have been forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they have been retained. Verse 24, but Thomas, one of the 12 called Didymus was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore were saying to him, we have seen the Lord, but he said to them, unless I shall see in his hands the imprint of the nails and put my finger into the place of the nails I put my, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again, his disciples were inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors having been shut and stood in their midst and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, reach here your finger and see my hands and reach here your hand and put it into my side and be not unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are they who did not see and yet believed. Many other signs, therefore, Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these have been written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. So as I said, we're going to be focusing on really verses 19 through 23 this morning. Um, but in the context, this is on Sunday evening, Sunday afternoon, where when Jesus was arrested, the disciples scattered. They were hiding. They ran away. You remember Peter denied him. They denied that they knew the Christ. And so on Sunday night, they were locked up in this locked room hiding together because they didn't what 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 want what happened to Jesus to happen to them. They were afraid of the religious rulers who were out there. And suddenly, Jesus shows up in the room. Now, that's a comforting thing when, like, suddenly a dead man pops up in the room with you. Um, so Jesus, the first thing he says is, fear not. Or no, he, he says, peace be with you, fear not. Peace, shalom. And he showed him his wounds, and he, and he said, this is okay, and their mood immediately changed from fear to joy. Their situation didn't change, but what had changed was Jesus had walked into the room. Now, this isn't part of the main emphasis of what I'm talking about today, but it's kind of a sub-point that in the presence of Jesus, when we're going through trials, our fears are taken away, and there's great peace and comfort in the presence of Jesus, no matter what our situation is. And I know many of you, including myself, have been going through seasons of difficulty. And as a staff, uh, for those who are sick, we do pray for healing. For those who experience loss, we pray for comfort, but mostly we pray that as we walk through these trials that we would know and understand the presence of Jesus in a deeper way. Because in the presence of Jesus, we have peace no matter what our situation. Um, Francis Chan told the story that back in 2007, there were these Korean missionaries who were in Afghanistan and they were arrested by the Taliban. And he says that after they were released, many of them said that they wished they were back in prison. And, he, and why did they believe that? Or why did they say that? They said, because the presence of Jesus was so powerful with us when we were in prison, that we wish we were back there. They said, we're back in our homeland, we're safe, but we don't have that same feeling of the presence of Jesus. He reminds us that when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fire for not 
worshiping other idols, suddenly there was the presence of Jesus. There was a fourth person in the fire to be there with them. He talks about how Stephen, the first martyr, before he was stoned, he looked up into the heavens and he saw Jesus. He saw the presence of Jesus. So we can go from turmoil to peace in an instant with the presence of Jesus. So the first thing he says to him is, look, I know they're out here looking for you. I know that I've been arrested. I know you've seen me die on the cross. I'm here, peace, shalom. But then he goes on in the next verse and he says, peace again before he continues. And I think maybe what he's doing here is he's saying, yes, peace on the outside. Don't be afraid of all your situation. And by the way, I'm about to give you a mission and I'm not mad at you. So peace for what's about to come to you. You know, you think about Peter, Peter was probably feeling a lot of guilt, a lot of regret because he's the one that said, hey, I don't care what everybody else does, I'll die with you. And the first thing that he does is he scatters and he denies him three times. I feel a little guilty about that. But Jesus looked at him and said, peace, it's okay. And then, so he gives two, he, he says peace two times to really set their minds at ease. And I think also to prepare them for the task that he's about to give them. And the main thing I wanna get into today is this verse, this line that says, as the father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Jesus was giving them a mission. He was preparing them for it. He's saying, have the peace of God, the shalom on you but I'm giving you a mission. As the Father has sent me, even so I'm sending you. And I thought about this, I'm kind of meditated on what does it mean as the Father? How did the Father send Jesus? Now there's probably lots of things we could say about this, but I've got four things that I wanna say about how the Father sent Jesus and how we are sent. The first thing I wanna say is Jesus was sent because of God's great love for the world. We read in John, where Jesus, it said that Jesus was not sent to condemn the world, but to save the world, that God loved the world so much that he sent his son. The payment on the cross was the payment for the sins. It was big enough for the entire world. So the first thing as we are sent, as Jesus was sent, is we do it because God loves every single person on the planet. He loves everybody in this room, he loves those who are less lovable. We can't write anyone off. There's no one who does not deserve salvation. We are in a very, uh, what can I say, divisive time in our country, right? We have a lot of things we can divide over, over the last few years. We are on mission and we have an obligation to every single person on the planet. There's no one who is too immoral that's too far away from the gospel. There's no one who's too defensive. There's no one who has sexual preferences that say you are too far away from the gospel. There's no one who's too druggy. There's no one who's radically left leaning, who's too far. There's no MAGA Republicans who are too far. Yes, on both sides, there's no Palestinians, there's no Russian, there's no one on this planet who does not need the gift of God of salvation. Everyone is created in the image of God. There's one way into the kingdom. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we are obligated to bring the gospel because of the great love of God to everyone not just our neighbors in our neighborhood who look like us and act like us, but everyone on the planet. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. amen. So first of all, Jesus was sent because of God's great love and we are sent as messengers of the gospel because God loves everyone and everyone is worthy of receiving, well, no one's worthy. We're all of sin and fall short of the glory of God, but everyone has value. God loves every single person, no matter where they are right now. The second thing I wanna share about it is that Jesus was sent submitting to the Father's authority. He was sent out of great love for the world. He was also sent because God sent him. Jesus submitted to the will of the Father. You remember in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus was saying, 
Lord, if, if possible, take this cup from me. He didn't wanna go through what he did, but he said, not, your, not my will, but your will be done. He was sent because he is under the authority of the Father. And in the same way, after Jesus rose from, the, rose from the dead, he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given me, therefore go make disciples. Now I've said this before and you guys, um, you guys are probably tired of hearing this. This is not the great suggestion, it's become the great omission, this, this command to make disciples, to be engaged in evangelism. We talk about here at Dunwoody Community Church that our mission is to be disciples and make disciples. And we say that that's really two wings of a plane. Um, being disciples is our, all the things that we do when we read our Bibles, we're in community groups, all those kind of things as we're drawing closer to God, as we're building up one another, we are being disciples. But making disciples is this other wing of the plane that demands that we go out and reach people who don't know Jesus. It's not a suggestion. But unfortunately, we, and I'm speaking to me also, I don't have this down, we treat it like, we, like flossing. How many of you guys floss every single, oh, look, look at you guys, very holy people. How many, how many, I found a trick. If you start flossing two weeks before your dental appointment, <laughs> has anybody ever tried that out? You show, here, at the, amen, you show up to the dentist and they say, have you been flossing? Yes, I have been flossing. Well, it looks great, thank you very much. And so I don't do it again. Now we, we treat making disciples kind of like a suggestion. I should eat more vegetables. I should floss my teeth. I should do all these things. But we forget that it's, it was a command, it was a commission from one that said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, therefore go. We can't ignore that, okay? We are sent as Jesus was sent because of God's great love for the world, that the gospel needs to go to anyone. It's the only hope for people. We are sent because we submit to the authority of Jesus as Jesus submitted to his Father. And thirdly, um, being sent required intentionality and sacrifice. How was Jesus sent? He was very focused on his mission. He didn't go out and say, well, I know my ministry is about here to start but I'm gonna go out here and pursue this other thing for a while. He was focused on fulfilling the mission that God had sent him. And it cost him everything. You know, we read, we read in Philippians where it talks about uh, the glory that God or that Jesus had with the Father. Philippians, it says that although he existed in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Being sent requires that you're focused on this. It's not an afterthought, but it's something that we think about. It's something that we're intentional about and it should cost you. And I just wanna you know, ask all of us, um, what is being sent costing us? If we look at our time, our talent and treasure, can we look and see that, yeah, this, this is costing me costing me something. I am intentional about this. You know, we have a family at our church, um, the Shantzes, who we sent a few years ago. They're gonna be here on, in July on the 14th. As a matter of fact, uh, we'll have a lunch for them after the service. Um, for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of going to work with Wycliffe Bible translators to make sure that the gospel the good news gets out to every single person, every nation, tribe, and tongue on the planet. They gave up a lot of comfort. They lived over here in a nice house in Dunwoody. He had a great job in IT, making a lot of money. He set it all aside and said, no, this is worth it. We're gonna take our family. We're gonna move over here to the other side of the world for the sake of the gospel. Now, I'm not saying everyone has to do this, but I think all of us should really take a hard look at our lives and say, is this commission, is this command to make disciples, to be on mission, is it costing us anything and are we intentional about it? So the fourth thing that I wanna say, we, it, it, we were sent out of the love of God, we were sent by the authority of Jesus, we do it with intentionality and sacrifice. And the fourth thing that I wanna say is we do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. You look at what Jesus did right here um, after he said that he had, was sending them, he said, receive 
the Holy Spirit. You know, when Jesus began his earthly ministry at his baptism, the first thing that we see happen after he was baptized is said that the Spirit of God descended in bodily form like a dove. He was filled with the Spirit. In the same way, all of us who have trusted in Christ as our Savior have received the Holy Spirit who lives in us and dwells in us. So we do this job not just by being clever and not being so smart in the way that we share the gospel with people, but we do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is a great comfort for us because none of us are that smart that we can convince somebody, argue somebody into the kingdom. I don't think anybody here has ever been argued into the kingdom. It's more in different contexts and maybe multiple times you hear the gospel message and after a certain point, it's just like, it just clicks in you. The Holy Spirit reveals that to you. It's God who saves you. We are the messengers of that, but it's not up to us and our wisdom and our power to be able to convince somebody of the truth of the gospel. You know, as a matter of fact, after this, Jesus said that, hey, before you go on mission, don't go anywhere, stay here in Jerusalem until I send the Spirit. And um, 50 days later, that's where, we get, that's where we get our word Pentecost. It comes from the, word, the Greek word, um, which means 50. 50 days later, when they were gathered together, the Holy Spirit fell on them, and then everything just kind of exploded. They started sharing the gospel out there. Lots of people came to know Jesus. It was the power of the Holy Spirit that Jesus gives us that allows us to have the power to be his, his representatives. So how are we sent? We're sent because, because God loves everybody and everyone needs the gospel. Every single person, no matter how much we disagree with them, no matter what their lifestyle, bears the image of God and everyone needs the gospel to be saved. So we go to everyone. We go under the authority of Jesus. It's not a great suggestion. It's a commandment. We do it with intentionality and sacrifice and we do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to share some application points, but also I don't want to miss verse 23 because that can, that can mess people up a little bit here. And I thought about skipping it, but I thought, no, though, no, I'm cheating if I do that. He says, verse 23, if you forget the sins of any, their sins have been forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they have been retained. What's he talking about here? Do we have the authority to say, I forgive, your, I forgive you of your sins? Do we have... For, authority to forgive sins. Well, one of the principles of biblical interpretation, you guys all know about this, is look at a verse in context. Don't pull it out, uh, stand alone, put it on the wall, and look at it up there. But what's the context? The context is being sent out in mission. And another principle is, are there other verses that support this? Are there any verses in Scripture where you can see Peter saying, I forgive you of your sins. Or you see Paul saying, I forgive you of your sins. You never see that. You see Peter saying, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of sin. Only God can forgive sin. So what this verse is saying is that through the message of the gospel, we are deliverers of the power of forgiveness. And I could, I could say, if I lead somebody to Christ and they truly repent and they they believe in Christ and they say, I wanna follow Jesus. I can say your sins are forgiven, but it's not based on my authority, it's based on the authority that we have in the gospel. Does that make sense to everybody what that's all about? It doesn't mean that there are certain people who you have to go confess your sins to and you are absolved. There's been some bad things that have happened as a result of that. And we have a whole reformation as a result of all that. So that's not what that, what that verse means. So we are sent as Jesus because God loves the world. We're sent because he has authority over us. And as followers of Jesus, we kind of need to do what he tells us to do, right? We can't ignore this. We do it out of the intentionality and sacrifice, and we do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus was sent on a mission to make disciples. He was solely focused on it. Now, all of us, I know, wake up in the morning and the first thing we think about is how am I gonna make disciples today, right? Everybody, that's the first thing on our mind. Now, I'm talking to myself. 
as well. Um, but I want to encourage you a little bit, or I want to encourage you a lot this morning. I'm not here just to say, you guys, we're all awful, because I'm lumping myself into all this. Um, we are making an impact. As a church, we are making a great impact. I just want to call out a few things that because you are part of this congregation, that this is being credited to your account. If you serve here, if this is your church, if you give here, this is all being credited to you. I just wanna call out some things that have been going on. You know, at VBS uh, recently, we had 12 kids who said that they wanted to receive Jesus for the first time. There was a grandkid, uh, Becky's grand grandson, for the first time, raised his hand to receive Jesus. 12 kids. <laughs> you, you may not have been the one delivering that message, but if you're a part of our body, that's credited to your account. That's part of making disciples. We have community groups where we've seen people come to Christ through our community groups. We have people who are leading discipleship groups and who are involved in some of our ministries here who have come to Christ in the last couple of years through our community groups. I already talked about the Shantz family, that they've been sent out of this, of this church. Cindy Knight with Hope Now with, with Ukraine. Um, involved in ministering to the, or to, the, to the orphans in Ukraine and bringing the gospel to them. Allison Jansen, who's full-time in cross-cultural ministry. Scott Dizon, Donna Dietrich, who are part of Family Promise. Terrell Davis, who's uh, M4 Institute. That's a missions organization that many of you guys are being sent on. And um, kudos to... Carl Johnson over here. Carl, stand up for just a second. Carl over here at, at the mansions planted a church. They meet on Sunday afternoons. He planted a church over there to reach out to people who, who can't get out. Because you are a part of our church, you are being sent and we are being sent out together. And let's give praise to God about that. Can we give God praise? <laughs> Now, as, as a church, we try to be very strategic. What we know is that evangelism leaks, and it just does, okay? This sharing the gospel, reaching out to other people, being intention, intentional about it, we get busy. I mean, we love our community groups, we love our Bible studies, we love our devotions and all that, and we forget that we're on mission, so as a church, we try to do things regularly that kind of keep all that at, at the forefront. And that's why we do things like VBS. We do VBS because we wanna remember that, hey, we're supposed to be on mission. We do things like this 4th of July parade. We're not doing that because we don't have anything to do on July 4th, or maybe it's too cold in my house, so I'm gonna go walk for three miles and 90 degrees. How fun's that gonna be? We still have seven spots available. I'd love to have you join us. But we, we do that because there's 20 to 30,000 people who are lined up along there and we're gonna be wearing t-shirts to say, don't want community church. We're not promoting our church, we're promoting Jesus. And we're gonna be there at a tent and we're gonna be talking to people. And we're gonna give away a TV, not because we want somebody to have a TV, but because we're getting names from people. So you want a TV, give us your name. We're gonna reach out to you, not in a threatening way, but we wanna be intentional about reaching our community. That's why we do stuff like party in the parking lot that we've, we've done here um, over the last year's community yard sale, fall festival, Christmas concerts. We do, we do all these things as a church because we want to model that we need, evangelism doesn't happen by accident. We need to kind of be intentional about that and lead with that. And I want to encourage all of us, and I'm speaking to me also, how are we doing individually? We need to keep our gas pedal on this evangelism thing that we have going on, living as those who are sent by Jesus. And I wanna give you just a couple of ideas, things that I think about and things that I can, can, can encourage you with. Um, because we're called as a church to do all these things. And each Sunday we say, Dunwoody Community Church, you are sent, you're the church scattered. And so we're supposed to be salt and light and city on a hill wherever we go. So the first thing I want you to think about is where's your fishing pond? 
Now, what do I mean by that? Um, you're probably not going to have a big fishing pond by just coming to church on Sunday. Or for me, if I come here and I'm hanging out with the staff all the time, um, I've said this before, I'm pretty sure most of the staff is saved. I'm not sure about everybody. No, I'm just kidding. Um, everybody in the staff believe. So I have to be intentional about finding what are those places, where are those places where I can go intentionally build relationships with people who don't know Christ. And I would say, don't do something like, oh, I'm going to go, you know, 50 miles away or whatever. Go someplace that you're, it already works for you like your neighborhood, like the people around you. Do you know the names of the people, everybody in your cul-de-sac or on your street? Do you know their names? Do you know their story? Um, I was excited for a couple of reasons. My next door neighbors just moved away. I was excited one, because they, they feed the deer and the deer come in and eat all my flowers. And I've been living with a heart, with a spirit of bitterness for many years because of that. <laughs> I was excited about that. But I was also excited, you know, some of our neighbors were like, oh, I hope it's a nice young Christian family that moves in. And I'm like, no, I hope it's drug dealers that move in because then we'll have this steady stream of non-believers coming in. They're like, don't pray for that, don't pray for that. It, it's, not, it's not drug dealers, but um, maybe, we don't know. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it was doing so well up until this point, wasn't I? Think of your fishing pond, your neighbors, your neighborhood. What does that look like for you? If you have kids, sporting events, man, you're hanging out anyway, you're talking, you know, talk to these people, build relationships, invite people out to dinner. It's great just to go out and things kind of settle down when you're having a meal with, with, with someone. You like to drink wine, join a wine club and meet some people for that. I have uh, really good friends of mine who go out to dinner every Friday night and they go to a decent restaurant, but they decide to sit at the bar because there's more talking at the bar and they go to the same place every Friday night to sit down, yes, to have dinner and hang out, but also because they know every person who works there, they know their stories and they run into the same people all the time. That's their fishing pond. As believers, what happens, the longer that we are Christians, the fewer non-Christians we know. So we have to be intentional about going out there and find people. So first of all, think about what your fishing pond is. You know, pray about that. Where is it? Where are you gonna go where you can be in relationship with people who don't know Christ? And the second thing I wanna say is, come up with some kind of system or accountability or something that's gonna force you to do it. Because honestly, as much of a passion this is of mine, uh, I get busy and I got stuff to do. I worked in my garage all day yesterday. I did all this stuff. Um, I have to be intentional about it. So one of the things that I do is I start missional communities that will run for like a season. I'll do those a couple times a year and we gather and we just hold each other accountable for, for being externally focused. Um, I have, I recently read a book and we might suggest to our community group leaders, heads up on this. I'm not saying we will do it, but this is a great book by a guy named uh, Dave Ferguson. Dave Ferguson is a pastor of a large church up in Chicago, and it's called Bless, B-L-E-S-S, -S, how to bless your neighbors and, you know, some kind of tagline and change the world, because of course, they'll sell more books. And, oh, not just bless my neighbors, but change the world. But Bless stands for these things. He says, Begin with prayer, okay? Who are we praying for? And I wanna encourage you here, um, have a list of people that you pray for daily. I have about, I don't know, maybe 25 people that I pray for at least five times a week, by name, five times a week. Some of these people I've been praying for for about, you know, almost 40 years, maybe 40 years. Um, people who I thought were, there's no way this person's ever gonna be interested, who now people who are on this list who watch our services every Sunday um, from a different place in the country, I'm seeing the answer to these, to these prayers. The first thing that we need to do is remember this is not something that you were gonna call somebody and have just the right words. The Holy Spirit is involved in this. Jesus has given us his spirit. He's also sent his spirit in the world to be part of drawing people to himself. So begin with prayer. Secondly, listen. 
okay, so say you, you're, you're hanging out with your neighbor and man, you're just like, all right, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna bring this up? How am I gonna uh, share the gospel? Um, don't, don't share yet. Just, just get to know them, listen to them, understand their story, no matter how crazy that it is. You know, they might say, you know, I worship the, the holy vegetable garden or whatever, you know, it, 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 no, that's, that's, that's interesting, that's interesting. Don't, don't push in too much, but just listen. You know, as I do, I do a lot of premarital counseling and one of the exercises that I do with um, people who are getting married is you kind of do this um, listening exercise where basically you ask one person, one, one member of the couple to say, hey, um, I wish this about you or I wish you would do this or I wish you wouldn't do this because if you did this, this is how it would make me feel. And the job of the person receiving that is not to say, all right, I'm gonna fix that. Here's like the five things I'm gonna do. No, that doesn't work at home. It, guys, if, you're, if your wife ever is sharing stuff with you, um, say, do you want me to fix this or you just want me to listen for understanding? 99 out of 100 times, it's I just want you to understand and listen, right? So the job of the person listening is just to say, here's what I heard you said. You wish this and if this happened, this is the way it would make you feel. Um, when we're talking to people, don't feel like you need to bring everything at them the first time. Go for the long game. You know, studies have shown that like people have to hear the gospel or be exposed to a Christian influence maybe 20 to 25 times before they put their trust in, in, in Christ. Don't feel like you have to say something right there unless it's the only time you're gonna see it and then, then go ahead. Um, begin with prayer, B, L, listen, eat. Okay, we talked about that. Take them out to a meal, just hang out with them, serve them in some way. And then finally, you can share with them. But remember that it's Jesus, it's the Holy Spirit who leads people to Christ. It's not our cleverness or that I'm such a great gospel presenter. Okay, this all makes sense, everybody. So as the Father has sent Jesus, so he has sent us because of his great love for the entire world because he has authority over us, but it's gonna require that we are intentional and it requires sacrifice, but he has given us his spirit to accomplish his mission. So let's do this together. And I'll keep reminding you every time Jeff goes on vacation about our, about our mission. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pray for us. And then we are going to have communion and um, here at Dunwoody Community Church, communion is open to anyone who has put their trust in Jesus. And I would just say that if you're here today and you haven't crossed that line yet, you're my favorite person in the room. And I just wanna encourage you, maybe today's the day that you just say yes to Jesus. And when everybody gets up to take communion, you take communion as well. But it's open to anyone who's put their trust in Jesus. I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna pray for our communion. And then uh, you guys can grab the elements. It's gluten-free over here. Grab the elements, take it back to your seat. We'll take it together, and then we'll continue in worship and have a special commissioning time, okay? Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for the reminder this morning of the mission that you have uh, given us, Lord, that as you said, the Father sent you, and you are sending us in the same way. And Lord, I thank you for this church. I thank you for the encouragement. I thank you for all the fruit that we see here in this church for people who are serving you in so many different ways, Lord. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would well up within us, that we would remember that our life is not our own, but we are bought with a price. And we're not bought just for our own comfort and only for our own salvation, but that, so that we can then pass this on to our generation. Lord, it's our time this is our territory, this is our generation, this is our season. I pray that we would be faithful to the call that you have called us to. And Lord, I pray for everybody here. I pray especially for those, anybody in here today who hasn't yet put their trust in you, that they would just acknowledge their, that all of us have sinned, all of us constantly offend you, but there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, that that's why you came and that's why you gave your life on the cross. You lived a perfect life. You took our punishment so that we can take your righteousness. 
And I pray that they would trust in that today and come join us as we take communion together. So Lord, we pray that you would uh, speak to us now as we get communion, as we examine our hearts and we prepare to take these elements together. Amen. It was the night that Jesus was betrayed. He was with his disciples. He took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body that's broken for you. As often as you eat this, remember me. Let's remember him together. In the same way, he took the cup and he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink this, remember me. Let's remember him together. You can put the cup in the seat back in front of you. Let's pray together again. Lord, we thank you so much that what a great idea that we, you gave us this ordinance that we break the bread and we drink the cup to remember that you gave your life for us. And Lord Jesus, we bless your name because you were obedient to what the Father sent you to do. And we would be lost without you, Lord. All of us would would be subject to eternity away from you because we would still die in our sins. But you gave yourself for us that all of us who trust in you would not perish but have eternal life. And we thank you for that, Lord. I pray that as we continue to worship, that you would bring to mind all the things that we've been talking about, that your presence would fill this room, um, that you would fill this space, and um, that your name would be lifted up. We pray this in Jesus' name. Now let's stand together and let's continue our time of worship.
Go ahead and take a seat. Well, SC's. <laughs> Whoops, why don't you guys come on down here? Let's get your kids up here, too. This is going to be an emotional moment. Um, gosh. See, this is why Jeff needed to be here. I wouldn't have to say anything right now. <laughs> um, so let me, let me just t- share what's, what's going to happen also. So we're going to pray, pray for them as we send them off. And um, then, then we're going to sing a song of blessing over each other. And they're going to try to sing it over us. You know the song, The Blessing? They're going to sing that over us. We're going to sing it over one another. Um, so I'm going to ask... Who, who, would like to, who would like to be part of praying for them? A couple people. Come on, Karen. Anybody else? Laura, come on up. Dan. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just do that. We'll, we'll have a few people pray for them. I'm gonna, Jared, I'm going to hand this mic off right here. If everybody would just stand and lay virtual hands on them. Uh, Karen, we'll start with you, bro. And then after, after Dan prays, if you guys want to come up, just like really put your hands on them. Come on, we're, COVID's over. You, you can come up here or not. I think it's over, isn't it? No. Um, if you want to come up here closer, that's, that's great. And then the people that I called out will pray. Dan will pray and I'll do a closing prayer and then we'll, then we'll sing the blessing over everybody. Okay, Karen, let's pray. All right, pray with me. Um, God, how you have spoiled us, um, God, in so many ways, God, but God, with the Estes, Lord, with people who are fun and faithful and amazing musicians, God, who delight in serving you and in pushing all of us to um, love you more, God, you... God, you have gifted us for many years with them, and and now you are going to gift another community with them, Lord. And we are really, really, really going to miss them so much, Lord, but we are so happy um, and delighting and sad to see them to see them go. God, I pray for their time in their new city and their new community uh, in Colorado, Lord, that you would bless them, that you would give them something even better than DCC there, Lord, and uh, it doesn't seem like you can get much better, <laughs> but somehow we know, we know that with you, God, it's, it's only ever getting better, Lord. Thank you so much for the years. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much for the way that I've personally been able to serve with them nearly every week for four or five something years, Lord. And it is every moment has been a pleasure with them. Thank you for um, bringing them here. Uh, And thank you for um, sending them to do something even greater, Lord. Guide them. Be God there pillar of fire by night and cloud by day, Lord. Um, Comfort them as they are stepping out in in great faith, Lord, um, to do what they feel you've called them to, Lord. They love you. We love you. We love them. And pray you would bless them and help us (laughs) to love you more um, every single day. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, Father, thank you so much for the sweet family. Thank you that we have been able to watch it grow. We watched this little family grow in size (laughs) and in age. And Lord, we've had the benefit of even watching and the blessing of watching these littles grow up in you. And so, Father, I just pray as they go about this, this new adventure, which has been on a joy, I mean, a desire, rather, of their heart for a very long time. And Lord, you have made a way for them. And we trust that you have paved the way and that you've gone ahead and that you have prepared the way for them and they're ready to walk in it. And so, Lord, we are going to send them out with a blessing and we know that you're going to bless them out there. And we know, Lord, that they are going to bless everybody that they come in contact with as well. So, Lord, may they remember us as we remember them. We love them and they have been such a blessing to this, to this church. We've walked through a lot with this family and we have loved them hard. So Lord, I just pray that they would take a little piece of us with them 
And, and this is just see you later, later because they have an extra room we'll all be coming to stay in. Our Father, we thank you for the ways in which you have blessed Joseph and, uh, and Taylor already with each other, blessed us with them. And I pray that each of these blessings, Lord, will be amplified as they go to Colorado. You have blessed them as they have served together in the ministry of this church. And I pray that you will lead them to a body in Colorado where once again, you will allow them to bless a church together. You have blessed their marriage. It's just a joy to see Joseph and Taylor as they uh, interact with each other and the richness of the relationship you've already given them. And I pray that you would bless that, that it too may deepen and broaden and spill out to the people that they serve in Colorado as well. You've blessed them with the ability to work together in their day job. Not many people get that. And I pray that you will uh, amplify the blessing of that job, both that they may just enjoy serving together, but that you will also, as Tim preached this morning, give them the opportunity among many clients who probably have no clue who you are or the clues they have are all wrong to see the beauty of a couple who is dedicated to their Lord Jesus Christ and that they may be attracted not to all the stuff that people always say about religion, but to the beauty of the relationship that you have built between Joseph and Taylor. So Lord, as they go from us, we know they're never really going from us because the body of Christ crosses time and space and location and they still remain our dear brother and our dear sister. And I pray for them and for their children that you will simply grow them stronger and richer and deeper in your love and in love for each other and love for the people of God. So, Lord, we um, commit them to you. We thank you so much, Lord, for the blessing that they are. And, um, Lord, that even though they're going to be far away, they're going to be near in our hearts. And uh, so thank you, Lord. Thank you for just the years that we've had together. And, Lord, I pray, for, I pray that you would help the church where they end up to realize what a great gift that they have as uh, they're getting some of the cream of the crop from Dunwoody Community Church here, Lord. And I pray that uh, they would represent you well in their new community, new relationships. <clears throat> Lord, that you would bless them, that they get plugged in, pray for safe travels, for all the moving, all the logistics that have to happen, Lord. And we commend them to you. We commit them to you, Lord, until we see each other again, hopefully next week, we change our mind. <laughs> but if not, whenever we see them again, Lord, we pray that you would bless them and watch over them. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to, yeah, let's give them a hand for all their service. So they wanted to sing this, uh, this song over you guys, and we'll sing it back and forth to each other. Yeah, well, they'll, they'll try to sing it. Whoever planned this was just. Uh, I, think, I think you planned. The I think whole I planned this. That was. You should take my planning privileges right away, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> you sure, Addie?
Lord, all we need to say is amen. All that's just been said, to you be the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Dunwoody Community Church, if you need to be sent now, you are sent. If you got another five minutes, Taylor wanted to do one more song since it's her last Sunday, whatever. So we understand you got to go. Uh, you know, you got reservations, whatever. Um, but Taylor's watching you, and she'll no, just kidding. <laughs> we're gonna do. We're gonna close with with one more song here, yeah. and if you can stay, yes. stay.
is mine. Jesus is mine. And everywhere I go, and everywhere I'll be, oh Jesus is mine. Let's sing it out. Oh, Dunwoody Community Church, Dunwoody Pentecostal Baptist Church or whatever. Y'all are sent. God bless you. Thanks for being here. See you next week.